Morning, morning, everybody. Evolution of the consciousness. Love is spoken here. I'm Michelle Carillas on this Saturday, April the 13th, 2024. I'm in the place to be. Baby, baby. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing fantastic, magnificently, and marvelous because I am. I am. So I've been thinking about something for for all this week. And then once um we got some information a couple of days ago. I mean, it's really, really, really in the center of my thoughts. And I'm doing everything in my power to con- to, to see how I can put it all together. Because, you know, I told you, we learn a lot by how people model themselves. You know, the way someone models themselves is is great for me because, you know, I can see them in action, hear them in action, feel them in action, you know? And that's how most of us learn from people is how they model themselves. Like my dad and my mother, you know, my culture. I learned so much from how people model themselves. And I told you, I usually don't pay much attention to what people are saying to me. I really don't. (laughs) I mean, because that's just not how I process things or how things are, how, how I can express, you know, people have to express themselves the way is comfortable for them. So for me, I told you my what I do is I kind of pay attention to what people are doing and I do everything in my power to kind of recreate what they say to me in my mind, in my thoughts to see if I can get the same results, you know. And usually it it does work with certain people that have a certain characteristics about themselves. And so this this word has been on my mind for a while and it's about credibility. Credibility. So what is credibility? It's a a believability of a source or message, right? And that is so important, though. And that's probably why I'm I'm struggling with it so much and and how to to reconcile it and how to uh, improve my development on understanding that because it's, it's... it's it's one of those words. Like I told you, a lot of these words are you losing, losing their value. Okay, losing, and they and these, a lot of these words have been taken over, cultivated, conjured up into something else, and that's why you have to really consider what it means when someone says they are they have you know they they're credible you know credible journalism, credible in academics, science, medicine on the web, on the street, you know, business leadership, social media. Is there, is there credibility there? And, I, and, and I'm struggling, you know, not struggling, but is this something that I'm contemplating, cultivating, probably meditating on and probably ruminating on to understand what's the value of credibility during these days and times, right? What is the, what's the credibility on it? I mean, you know, what's the what's the results of credibility during these times? You know, this year, 2024. So I looked it up in Wikipedia and other places on the web, you know, just to get some some information about, you know, what it exactly means. And it says here, credibility comprises the object and subjective components of the believability of a source or message. Okay, it dates back to Aristotle's theory of rhetoric. And Aristotle defines rhetoric as the ability to see what is possibly persuasive in every situation. Hmm. And then it goes on to say that he divided the means of persuasion into three categories. Ethos, plethos, logic, which he believes have the capacity to influence the re- the receiver of a message. Hmm. And so that kind of that that kind of bothered me when I when I read that because it says here that it's the ability to see what is possibly persuasive in every situation. And persuasive, let's look that up. And it's you know it's bothering me because like I you know cuz like I said I have to recreate stuff in my in my brain <laughs> to you know, to see it in my mind, because that's how I, unless I, because I know people that have, that are credible. I told you, like my father, certain teachers, but it's, but it's, it's that persuasion that's bothering me. It says it's a strongly held 
opinion, a conviction. And you remember what I said about theories and opinions. They don't mean a goddamn thing. There's, you know, you know, if you are, are, if you are attempting to persuade people, that's manipulation. That's deception. That's indoctrination. Okay. So it's, it's so that, that, that is what's bothering me because, you know, th- this should, this should have been challenged. You know, Aristotle's theories about credibility. So it's like a mode of commu- persuasion is a mode of communication. And I told you auditories have this certain mode of communication where they can be indoctrinating you, manipulating you, deceiving you, because they have this range of, of language and how they, how they, how they project it to, to, to their audience or to their people or to, to whatever, to the world, you know. There's a lot of deception in oratory language, in oratory behavior, manipulation, indoctrination. People, in other words, they're sophisticated thinkers, whereas, you know, their their words out of their mouth are saying one thing, but what's going on in their thoughts is something else completely. It can be completely off off topic of what they're talking about, but they're so persuasive, so convincing. And so that that bothers me. Because it's a it's it's manipulation. It's it's so as much as I you know. So I read Aristotle. I read I, t- I read about all of these people. You know, just because I just want to educate myself. Okay, I'm not saying that I, you know, sometimes I just don't understand. How about that? And for me, that's that's the whole purpose of it. What I'm doing, I want to make sure I understand what is really going on, because. Oratories have this skillful and effective public speaking abilities. I mean, they can convince you, you know, and it's, it, they have strong, strong, strong beliefs, strong beliefs, convictions. You know, they have strong faith. You know, those kind of things is what you, how you can get manipulated and indoctrinated. Those type of skills and abilities, you know. So, and usually, poli- you know, so every politician that's in our face on, well, there's on television, social media platform, internet, they have these these skills and abilities of what we call effective public speaking. Okay, that's fine. You know, I, I you know, I, I'm sure I can be trained to be be such of a person. But where, you know, but it it the the <laughs> it has to be effective, of course, effective. But again, what's bothering me about it is the tactics that people use to persuade you, like, especially, you know, is there integrity in what you are attempting to relay to me? You know, do you have code of ethics? You know, what's your intention and purpose? Is it to convince me of something or are you attempting to teach me something? You know, especially in a scientific, scientific credibility is what a lot of people will will die over. You know, they'll die over scientific credibility. Even if it's not true or it doesn't reproduce, reproduce itself. In other words, because not, a lot of people are not going to take that time to do so. They, they, they put it all in the hands of the, of the scientists. But I told you what scientists can do. You know, scientists are human beings just like you and I. Okay, I told you about that scientist that created the eye of Nubla the, or the eye of God. That was a scientist. Who who completely just lost his his mind and he and his consciousness was severely severely damaged, possibly because of an ego, you know, it was ego based that caused him to do such a thing. But yeah, so so I got kind of concerned about it, you know, our our like I said, our former our former leaders, our former scientists, our former. Uh, so-called intellectual minds, I call them the intellectual talking heads, you know, they were, they were human beings just like you and I. And they're, they're, I don't know, was there any, any peer review of some of these theories and opinions to see if they were reproducible and they, and they made sense and they were logical, rational, and reasonable? That doesn't happen. Everything's commercialized, and we know that. We know it. Everything's about selling us something, selling us something. And, you know, and, and it, like I said, it, it's turned into a form of just 
just sell it to them and, and, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Well, I told you about cause and effect. You know, you do reap what you've sown. So, yeah, the chips usually fall where they may. And we're in that, we're in the consequences of, of, you know, of our complacency and not, not necessarily walking the talk. Okay. It says also that trustworthiness and expertise play a role in credibility. You know, branding pay, plays a role as well, you know. So, and in business leadership, oh my goodness, you know. It says here about C- CEOs, their credibility is made up of two factors. Knowing what one is talking about, number one, or their expertise, and being able to be trusted. Do you trust your CEOs? Does anyone trust a CEO? I want you to name them, not necessarily to me, <laughs> but, but think about it among yourselves. Why are we putting all this credibility standards on CEOs? Anyway, I learned, cred- I learned about being a man of your word, a woman of your word from my parents, from my community, from my, you know, the people around. If, you know, if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. You know, I've I've lied and manipulated and did all that kind of stuff growing up too, just like everybody else, you know, as a, a developing human being, you know. But some people have that gift, which is deviancy and gen- degeneracy of auditory skills. You know, because like I said, we're so extreme about everything. So extreme about everything. And if you cannot trust politics, which I know the majority of of us cannot. If you cannot trust leadership, whether it's a CEO or or police officers or, you know, I mean, what can you trust? Where where is credibility? Who has it? Well, again, everything has to be dead developed in your innermost being. Okay. I'm gonna do everything in my power to be credible where people can trust me and where I'm being honest with people, regardless of what's going on around me. And if it isolates me to be a reclusive person to do so, so be it. But it's, I'm not going to become reclusive because I'm going to keep na- navigating through this maze of life and develop myself, whether I find like-mindedness or not, or whether I can find modeling enough, you know, enough mo- people modeling that behavior. Because a lot of people do. I, ha- I have so, I have such, I, I, you know, I have such inspiration for certain people that I've seen over the years, met over the years, known over the years. So I rely on that and as well develop that in myself. But in other words, it's an internal job. Everything is internal. Everything is innermost. And, you know, sadly, as I said, you know, some certain things were brought to our attention, you know, via information that we received. And I knew this was going to happen. You know, I knew this person was nothing more, nothing less, but just oratory. You know, strongly able to convince people, persuade people, manipulate, deceive, and indoctrinate people. You know, a cult leader like I told you about these clerics. You know that the, the, you know their behavior. You know, this is similar to narcissistic sociopaths, psychopaths. You know, they are they have their skills and abilities of manipulating us via their sounds and tones. And because a lot of us just are so overwhelmed with just to to just to exist, we just take it all in and say, okay, well, if this is what he's saying, we're gonna we're gonna allow him and him or her, they're that third party I told you about that you don't really need. You don't need a third party. What you need a what you need is someone to help and guide you that are on the same level as you and see you as equal. When someone gets into that oratory sphere, they th- they think they're the king of the jungle, the king of the world, and that you ought to bow to them. Maybe not literally, but definitely figuratively and metaphorically. You know, that you need to listen to them only. Only they can lead you somewhere. And, you know, just consider something for a minute now. I told you I'm I'm non-religious and I have I still have love for people that are. You know, that's that's not my responsibility to be concerned about whether someone's religious or not. I know the implications of it, 
and the results speak for themselves. And a lot of people are waking up to that. And I'm so thankful for that because it's smoke and mirrors, basically. A lot of it is smoke and mirrors. It has nothing to do, you know, you don't need to, you know, and it's a word that's meaningless at this point in time anyway. Just let your behaviors and actions speak for themselves. If you say you care for people, care for people. If you say you love people, well, love them. If you say you want to help people, well, help them. You don't need to convince them and say, look, but you can only get the help from me. You can only get my, your help from what I'm telling you. Don't listen to what anybody else is saying. Come on. What does that sound like to you? How do you feel when someone's telling you, you these kind of things? It's happening so much. You know, so like I said, what, like a CEO, let the C, like a CEO or whatever, have they pr- produced results for you? Politicians, what's the results? Police officers, law enforcement, are they protecting and serving you? Well, they, they are with some. But is that normally their results? Do they solve crimes? Do they solve? The, I mean, all I'm saying is that you can question these type of uh, realities and no one has to know. Because like I said, it's an innermost thing that you need to resolve within yourself anyway. You need to come to terms with it inside of you anyway. It doesn't matter what anyone's doing outside of you. Once you come to terms with your genuine, authentic reality, you can make so many decisions and you and then you can snap out of your trance and release yourself from these these parasites and predators that are they're attempting to have you hold on to them, hold on to their rhetoric, which is usually filled with degeneracy, deviancy, hatred, separation. We're better over here. You know, you've heard that, you know, people saying that. And I should have just, and when people start doing that, then, okay, that's like, this, that, that's like, for example, my mother, just use my mother as an example. And she had a lot of kids around her. Let's just say she had six kids, seven kids, eight kids, 10 kids around her. Now, her, and what my mom did is always treated all of us equal. You know, if I have to take out, if, if my brothers have to take out the trash, I have to take out the trash. <laughs> But I was tomboyish anyway, and I didn't care, you know. I didn't play with, you know. And it's so funny, you know. Like I said, she always treated us all equal. If, 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 you know, we were wearing this, all of us were wearing wearing each other's clothes, you know. You know, she would recycle, you know, something I wore, my brothers are going to (laughs) wear. I have a picture to prove it. (laughs) Especially with one of my relatives. Ah, I got a picture to prove that I was wearing that shirt first. But it would be uh, equivalent to her saying, like, pulling me aside and say, look, okay, I don't want you listening to anything else that your dad is telling you. Okay, I want you to listen to me only and blah, blah. You know, it's, 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 it's crazy making is it's my point. And if you're kind of susceptible to being easily uh, manipulated, sadly, and being easily influenced, you know, that word influence means something, too. There's a reason why that word is being used and how effective it is. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. If you're easily influenced, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll say, okay, okay. You know, you'll believe it. You heard me. You'll believe it. And you probably rarely will ask this person for proof of what they're saying to whether it, whether it means whatever they're attempting to, to tell you here. Influence, meaning the power. This is online these online dictionaries, which have, you know, you know, like I said, you get, you have to really pay attention to what's in these online dictionaries because a lot of it is AI generated, I'm sure. And AI, remember, AI is just picking up stuff on the internet, whether it's true or not, though, whether it is true or not. They're using all of this content, stealing it. They say they're teaching, but that's... If anybody's paying attention, they know they're not teaching AI anything. AI knows what AI is doing because AI knew what AI was doing 30 years ago. But anyway, I'm digressing. You know, I'm slipping off here (laughs) on this Saturday, Saturday morning, rambling like like I am here. But anyway, influence is the power to have an effect on people or things or person or things. You know, it can be good or bad influence, Uh, you know, positive or negative. Influence. Influence ought ought to be negative. I mean, ought to be neutral, however. But everything we 
are involved with during these days and times is extreme. It's either extreme or fanatical. There's no, it's not neutral. Nothing's neutral. Find a neutral situation for me, you know, and, you know. So, again, I got up this morning and told you I've been thinking about this word for a while, credibility. And it was proven to me, thankfully, that my, what I have developed myself into a person that I am, that if you develop yourself properly through, through trials and error, mistakes, so, sometimes luck, and then you get breakthroughs. In other words, trust yourself. Develop yourself. You cannot fool your consciousness. You cannot fool your consciousness. You're going to get yourself exposed. And that's what happened this week. And I, and I kept doing things in a subtle fashion to kind of wake people up, wake certain people up, do this or that and the other. And that's all you can do. Hey, free will. Everything is free will. And we ought to cherish our free will. You know, a lot of people are, like I said, all over the social media platform attempting to blame people for this and that and the other. Okay. I mean, if, that, if that's what you want to do. But most, in most cases, it's, it's something innermost. You know, you're blaming this person for, for putting out certain material when you knew you had free will to, to consume it or not. You know, that's what we're doing, too. We, we, we're, like, going after people and blaming people for the, the, how the cultures are, are deteriorating, how communities are deteriorating. Well, a lot of it is covert. And a lot of it was because of these oratory types coming through, you know, through certain communities, through cr certain cultures, infiltrating, you know, oratories, you know, e espousing this and espousing that, talking about peace. And we did not hold them accountable. OK, the nuclear bombs that were dropped in the 40s. Has anyone been held accountable for that? Because it's affecting all of us now, all of our health. All of our our resources are affected by that, even though it was on a it was on a com completely different place from where you are, unless you were in the middle of it. Most of the people that were involved in that possibly have already passed away because of the effects of that. No longer around to tell their story. So, cause and effect is real. You do reap what you've sown. You cannot fool your consciousness. All you're doing is harming your consciousness. And, and, and then also harming others who are, you know, standing by you, you know, loving you, but yet you're manipulating them, deceiving them, indoctrinating them, lying to them. And these people, like I said, they love you. Those of you that participate in that type of behavior. People love you. They love you for the good and bad. You know, they love you. Like some people that have done such horrendous things to this country to people, to human beings, but then they'll still, you know, they still have people that love them and wish that they would, you know, consider, reconsider their rhetoric and behavior and actions. So somebody does love you, you know, somebody does love you regardless of your behaviors and actions. And when you decide to work on your innermost being about your behaviors and actions, remember, no one has to know. Evolution of the consciousness. Love is spoken here. I'm Michelle Carithers.